Hello, my name is Dr. Farman Ali and I'm a GP, family physician. Today I wanted to talk about botulinum toxin which is also commonly known as Botox. So what is Botox? Botox is short for botulinum toxin which is a neurotoxin, in other words a nerve paralyzing substance. Now these substances target the nerve endings and signal processes that stimulate the muscle contraction and that's how the drug causes a temporary paralysis of the muscles. Remember the word temporary, it's temporary paralysis. Now for any muscle to contract the nerve releases a chemical messenger called acetylcholine. The acetylcholine attaches to the receptors on the muscles and causes the cells to contract or shorten. So what the Botox does is it prevents the acetylcholine from being released in that area and that way the muscle does not contract and it helps the muscle become less stiff and relax. There are some myths about Botox and I wanted to talk about each of them at the beginning and then in the end as well. Number one, anyone can inject Botox? No, this is not correct. It is a clinical injectable treatment and should be done only by trained clinicians. Number two, the fillers versus the Botox. The terms are commonly interchangeably used and many people don't, do not know the difference between the two. Is there any difference? Yes, there is a massive difference. The Botox relaxes the muscles and it is used as anti-wrinkle treatment. Whereas the fillers add a volume to the face. Another thing is, is it effective straight away? No. The results are very subtle. They become apparent in three to five days. The full results usually take seven to 10 days. Some people say you get hooked on once you use uh, Botox injections. And another thing is your lines will get worse once you stop using Botox. This is incorrect. Again, you are only buying time. Another thing is that the effect, how long does it last for? Usually between three and six months and it depends on the patient and the amount of times that you have received it before. Does it make you look frozen? Actually quite the opposite. Only if you don't know where and how to inject, then it can cause a frozen look, otherwise it does not. Is it a poison? No. It is a safe injectable medication and it has an approval by the FDA for over 20 years. Last but not the least, some people think that it is only for women. No, men can use the same treatment as well. They may require a bit higher dosage because of the strength of their muscles. So how does it work? In a normal neuromuscular junction, which is the junction between the nerve and the muscle, the axon releases acetylcholine and the receptors on the muscles respond to that by contracting. When a Botox is injected in that space, the botulinum toxin attaches to the axon and prevents the release of acetylcholine. In other words, there is less acetylcholine released in that area. And that's why the muscles do not contract. So in simplified terms, if you look at this diagram, the nerve is giving a signal to the muscle to contract. Once the botulinum toxin is injected, the signal is lost 
and there is no contraction of the muscles. So, where do we inject botulinum toxin? If you look at the muscles of the face, they are quite, it's a quite a complex anatomy and many muscles contribute to our facial expressions. Now, I would not go in the detail of each and every muscles because this is for clinical staff to remember. However, a simplified version would be that responds to the lines. The first one is the horizontal forehead lines. That muscle is called frontalis and that is injected and hence it prevents the forehead lines. Frown lines, they are made by a combination of muscles called the glabellar complex. These include the procerus and the corrugators, but you don't need to go into the detail of that. That is another area where we inject. The third area is called the crow's feet commonly, and the muscle responsible for that is orbicularis oculi. This prevents the circular muscle around the eye to contract. The fourth is the bunny lines. These are not common in every patient. They are only common in certain individuals. And the muscle responsible for that is called the nasialis. Nasiolabial folds, they are the levator labi superior. That is the muscles that cause the nasolabial folds. Radial lip lines, uh, they are circular lines around the lips, very common in smokers. Orbicularis oris is responsible for these circular lines. Marionette lines, these are caused by the depressor anguli oris. And oh, if you inject that muscle, it will reduce the wrinkling in that area. Some people have a wrinkled chin. This is due to a strong mentalis muscle and may require injecting of botulinum toxin or Botox in that area. Now, if you look at this diagram, the most commonly injected areas are the top three. Number one, the frown lines. Number two is for the forehead lines. Number three is the crow's feet. These are the most commonly injected areas. Some people want an eyebrow lift and they may require an injection in at number four. Number five, lower eyelid wrinkles. They are injected. However, it is advisable to avoid very injection very close to the eye. Number six, we talked about the bunny lines, but these are not common in all patients and only certain patients may require this. Gummy lines, these are number seven. Number eight, these are circular lines around the lips and these are very common in smokers. Marionettes, as we talked about, is number 10 and number nine is on the chin, the mentalis muscle. When advising a patient, what should we consider? If you look at it, there is the three areas, the forehead lines, the crow's feet and the frown lines. For these, it is advisable to consider neurotoxins or Botox. On the right hand side of the face, there are some deep lines around the mouth and also some under the chin and jaw line. Now, it is advisable to consider fillers for those areas. Some patients do ask whether there are any other medical uses of botulinum toxin. Yes, botulinum toxin, Botox, was approved for other medical reasons as well. So, upper muscle spasticity in the muscles in anyone older than two years of age, it is licensed for that. Strabismus or 
cross-eyed. It is licensed for individuals older than 12 years. Some people have condition called hyperhidrosis which is excessive sweating under the arms and this is licensed for that as well. Preventing migraines. Yes, that is correct. Preventing migraines. Some injections are given at the back of the head for migraines prevention. It is done in certain headache clinics. Reducing the symptoms of overactive bladder. This is done by the urologist, but this is a procedure which is performed in theater under direct visualization. Eyelid spasms are also known as blepharospasms are also injected with Botox. Cervical dystonia which is basically a neurological movement that causes neck pain can also be treated with Botox. Okay, so who can have Botox and who cannot? The following people should not have a Botox. Anyone with weakened target muscles, people with chronic respiratory problems, this does not include asthma. Elderly patients should not be given Botox. People with excessive weakness in certain muscles. People with a history of aspiration or difficulty in swallowing. Inflammation in the target muscle or infection. Neurological disorders or neuromuscular dis disorders such as multiple sclerosis and autoneuron disease and other similar diseases. And patients with a risk of glaucoma. So are there any side effects of Botox? Yes, there are potential side effects. The common ones are infections at the site of the injection. That is why it is important to have the makeup removed before injection is done. A bruising. Uh, remember there is a small artery that runs very close to the eye and that can cause a temporary uh, bruising. It might look quite bad in the beginning but it usually resolves. Draw eyes and temporary uh, drooping of the eyelid following cosmetic uses have been reported. Another one, diplopia or double vision has been reported as well. Other less common ones, upset stomach, headache, temporary unwanted weakness, urinary problems and other cardiovascular problems are have been reported but they are rare. People with allergies should not use a Botox or if there is an ongoing infection at the injection site. So let's revisit the myths about Botox. Can anyone inject Botox? No, this should be only done by trained clinicians. Is there a difference between a filler and Botox? Yes, there is a massive difference. A fillers are used for volume and Botox is used to reduce wrinkles. Is it effective straight away? No, the full effect will take up to 7 to 10 days. Do you get hooked on? No, you're just buying time. Do your lines get worse when you stop? No, this is incorrect. The earlier you start, the better it, the results are in the long term. The effects last for approximately three to six months. Does it make you look frozen? Again, no. As long as your clinician knows where to inject. Is it a poison? No. This is an FDA approved treatment and it is used for other treatments as well. Is it only for women? Again, no. Men can use this as well. Thank you very much.